The advantage that stealth technology has bestowed upon those countries which have used it is hard to underestimate, and it has changed the way warfare is conducted. But it's not just aircraft which can use it. Ships, vehicles and even troops can use varying types of technology to help hide them from detection. This is how stealth has changed modern warfare. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Ever since it was discovered that objects like planes or ships could be detected by reflected radio waves, which developed into the radar systems of today, there has been a concerted effort to try and keep them hidden. The theory behind stealth aircraft is that a smaller number can carry out surprise attacks behind enemy lines, giving little or no warning or time for the enemy to react and still have the same destructive impact as a larger non-stealth formation, whilst having a much greater chance of survivability. To do this, they need to remain as undetectable as possible for as long as possible, the goal being to stack as many of the odds of success in your favour. But it wasn't always like that. During the Vietnam War, Russian-made radar-guided surface-to-air missiles caused a big problem for the US, requiring dedicated aircraft to take on the air defence systems as part of many strike missions. In the Yom Kippur War, the Israelis lost a significant amount of aircraft again due to radar-guided surface-to-air missiles. In a non-stealth attack deep behind enemy lines, a typical formation might consist of nine aircraft, including four F-16CJs with eight AGM-88 Harm high-speed anti-radiation missiles that home in on radar transmissions to take out surface-to-air missile batteries. Then a B-1 bomber with four JDAM precision-guided bombs to destroy buildings or other high-value targets. And then another four F-16C with eight AIM-120 advanced medium air-to-air -air missiles for defense against enemy fighters. So what about doing this with stealth aircraft? Well, if it's primarily a bombing mission against buildings, then a single B-2 stealth bomber or two F-22s or two F-35s could in theory fly around surface-to-air missile and radar sites, thus removing the need for dedicated suppression of enemy air defense aircraft and missiles. As they are most likely not to be detected by air defense fighters, then there's no need for the air-to-air -air missiles or the aircraft carrying them either. So this just leaves the four JDAM bombs and the aircraft carrying those. Now that's just the theory, but in real life, there might be more aircraft involved, like refueling tankers, radar jamming, and coordination aircraft, depending upon the mission and where it is. But you can see there is a large reduction in the number of aircraft and armaments to do the same mission, with an increased likelihood of the planes and crews making it back okay. Losing aircraft over enemy territory not only risks the death of the pilots, but also that highly classified technology could fall into enemy hands. If a crew survive, then there could be a hostage situation and all the bad PR that comes with it. Like Gary Powers' U-2 spy plane shot down over Russia in 1960 and pilots shot down over Vietnam and in other conflicts. The US was the first to have true stealth aircraft in active duties with the F-117 Nighthawk from 1988 and the B-2 stealth bomber from 1997. These being the only stealth aircraft to have seen combat until more recently when the F-22 and F-35 saw action in the Middle East. The F-117 was used in the invasion of Panama, the war in Yugoslavia, and the First and Second Gulf Wars and is the only stealth aircraft to have been lost due to enemy fire. This brings us on to the issue that stealth is not 100% effective. It doesn't make aircraft invisible or undetectable, but it greatly reduces the ability of an enemy to see it until it is much closer than a normal aircraft might be. To give you an idea of the difference between an F-15, a fourth generation aircraft designed in the 1970s, to a current fifth generation F-35, the F-15 has a radar cross-section about 5,000 times larger than that of the F-35. The F-22 Raptor has an even smaller radar cross-section and better infrared masking 
with vectored rectangular exhausts compared to the F-35's round ones. Although giving a definitive radar cross-section for an aircraft is incredibly difficult because it changes depending upon its size, material, shape and angle it's measured at as well as the frequency of a radar, but as a rough guide, most centimetre radars would see the F-35 as a similar size to a metal golf ball and the F-22 similar to a metal marble. As far as bombers go, the B-2 Stealth Bomber has a radar cross-section of about the size of a football and the B-52 for comparison is about the size of a barn. The B-2 is now 30 year old tech and the new version, the B-21 will bring it up to date and in line with modern design. So even for its size, expect it to be in the golf ball range or less. Stealth aircraft can be seen by targeting radar, but only when they are very close, usually less than 10 kilometers. Other radar systems which use low frequency VHF, passive and multi-static radar can also pick them up at greater distances but these methods are too low resolution to get a target fix, but will give an indication that something is coming and where it is within usually a few hundred meters. Stealth missions have to be carefully planned to make the most of the technology, and even the way the aircraft is flown can make a difference. Part of the reason why the F-35 uses the advanced helmet system in conjunction with onboard radar and distributed aperture system cameras which allows the pilot to effectively see through the body of the aircraft is so that they don't have to move the aircraft to see what's around them or on the ground. Moving or banking the aircraft when it's approaching air defenses increases the likelihood of it being picked up by computers analyzing the radar signal returns. Keeping the aircraft in level stable flight lets it blend into the background noise and not stand out as a moving object. A major part of most conflicts is SEED or suppression of enemy air defenses, a task normally done by non-stealthy fourth generation aircraft. One plane acts as bait for the radar, whilst others target the radar once it's switched on to targeting mode. Aircraft like the F-22 and F-35 can fly behind enemy lines using their sensor fusion to build up a map of where the radar and missile threats are and pass the terminal guidance onto other dedicated fourth generation aircraft which can launch missiles from a safe distance. This type of suppression and destruction of enemy air defenses is called rollback and has been successful in all the modern conflicts to convert contested airspace into uncontested airspace and was done by wild weasels, aircraft equipped with anti-radiation missiles. With the stealth capabilities of the F-35, it's touted it could be the ultimate wild weasel. The only problem is that in order to remain stealthy, it can't use wing-mounted weapons and thus is limited to its internal weapon storage. The method of detecting and flying around missile and radar sites was used extensively by the F-117s in the Gulf Wars and in Yugoslavia, but in wartime, things can and do go wrong. The only stealth aircraft so far to be shot down by a surface-to-air missile was an F-117 on March 27, 1999 over Serbia. The F-117 was the first stealth aircraft to be developed and compared to later designs like the F-22 and F-35 is not as stealthy. But the way it was brought down was more down to the ingenuity of the commander of the missile battery, Colonel Zoltan Dani, Serbian intelligence and NATO mistakes as it was any deficiency in the stealth design. On the night of the mission, Missile Commander Danny knew from spies that the EA-6 Prowler electronic radar jammers and the Wild Weasel anti-missile aircraft which would have accompanied the F-117s were grounded due to bad weather, so they would be flying alone in the dark. The Serbs had also cracked the NATO communications between the US fighters and airborne radar planes directing them. Using this, they could piece together the routes used by the F-117s flying back to Italy from Yugoslavia. NATO had a lot of radar jamming assets in the north, so Danny set his radar pointing away from that area and only used the high frequency targeting sweeps in short 20 second bursts before moving to another location to avoid being detected and hit by NATO anti-radar aircraft. 
Danny used his P18 long-range acquisition radar on its lowest possible meter wavelength setting so that it would reflect off the interior of the aircraft and not be affected by the stealth skin. This setting was lower than the radar detectors on the NATO aircraft were calibrated to detect. If they had been working on the F117s, then they could have detected the VHF radar and moved away. Danny picked up the four F117s about 25 kilometers away. Knowing that they couldn't counterattack, he used his tracking data from the P-18 radar to aim the SA-3 targeting radar twice to try and get a lock, but failed. As they flew by, he tried again for a third time, and this time was successful and got a target lock when they were 13 kilometers away at an altitude of eight kilometers or 26,000 feet. This also appears to have been at the same time when one of the F-117s had its bomb bay doors open, making it a much more obvious radar target. Danny fired two S-125 radar guided missiles with proximity fuses. One flew close by but didn't detonate. The other exploded near one of the F-117s, causing it to lose control and crash. The pilot, Lieutenant Colonel Dale Zelko, ejected and was picked up by US Special Forces about eight hours later. The crashed F-117 was captured and parts of the stealth airframe were believed to have made their way back to Russia and China for examination to help their stealth programs, even though the technology by then was about 20 years old. About a month later, another F-117 was damaged by a missile, but was able to fly back to base although it's believed it was later removed from service. Although this was an embarrassing loss for the US and has been used by many opponents to stealth programs to show that stealth aircraft could be shot down by even an old Soviet era radar and missile system, it also showed that a lot of elements had to come together at the right place and at the right time for it to happen. Sloppiness by the NATO commanders in overestimating the stealth capabilities of the F-117 Reusing known air routes and not recognizing the Serbs' low frequency radar was operating below NATO recognized frequencies were major contributing factors to the loss of EF 117. This also had the effect of increasing the development of stealth for newer aircraft to make them even more stealthy and improve the way operations are managed to avoid the mistakes that happened here and not only in the US but also in. Russia and China, which now have their own stealth programs. It also increased the development of countermeasures with new advanced low frequency acquisition radars to find and track them, knowing that it could be done with a much more systematic integrated air defense systems approach rather than relying upon exceptional commanders in the field. The B-2 bombers conducted operations in the second Gulf War and Afghanistan and flew halfway around the world directly from air bases in the US to get at targets and none have acquired a target lock by any missiles. This new cat and mouse game of stealth and counter stealth will play out for decades to come, but stealth still offers great advantages over earlier non-stealth designs and with new manufacturing techniques evolving, they will bring stealth to most areas of the Air Force weapons design, and it's already being used by the Navy with stealth ships being able to look like fishing boats to enemy radar and better able to defeat anti-ship missiles. So if stealth is all about keeping the lowest possible profile in wartime, then you might be interested in keeping a similarly low profile out on the internet. With all the bandits out there trying to get access to your computer, and the important information it may be holding, like passwords and bank logins, etc., it's very important that you keep it safe. And one of the best ways to do that is to use a VPN like NordVPN, which is the one I use. Using a VPN hides your computer's real IP address and makes it more difficult for hackers to gain access to your computer. But it's not all about logging into your bank account. You can also keep a similarly low profile and watch things like videos not allowed in your geographical area by choosing another country to log in from. And now with NordLink's technology, which is built around the WireGuard protocol, it's even faster than before and outperforms any other mainstream VPN protocol with users experiencing up to two times increase in download and upload speed with NordLink's.
you can now get all of this with 70% off plus one month for free by using the coupon code CuriousDroid at the address shown. And there's even a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no excuse for not trying it out.